Hello my friends and a very warm welcome back to the first video in a brand new year and I really hope that all of you have had a great time spending the holidays with your family and now without further ado we're going to get straight into a new painting video where I'm going to be painting my first squad of Craftworld Eldar. So I've got a squad of five and I've done one quick paint in here just to do a test uh, job just so that I can make sure that I got the colours right and uh, everything is as I'd like it to be before I Sort of paint so we're going to paint the next four and we're going to paint them together so we're going to paint them sort of in a group together we're going to kind of batch paint these i'm going to start by using a huldra blue by scale 75 and this is a really nice dark blue so this is a great uh, base color and the scale 75 paints are also really good to thin down they also uh, make some really great uh, even uh, thin paint so we're going to use this as a nice base but it is going to require two to three coats of this color to get the consistency that we really want the good thing is this isn't going to lose any detail on the miniature because the paints are nice and thin so we're just going to cover all of the miniature like this apart from the the weapon and of course the skin color as well and we're going to paint all of the things like the skin and bits like that uh, a different color a little bit later now i'm also going to minimize the amount of washes and shades that i use in this video so i'm going to try to paint these models um, using a base color and then just building up from there to give you guys an idea as to how you can paint without the need of too much wash or too many washes or without needing to wash every part of the miniature and tie these colors together we're going to do all of that by I brush by hand. So once we've started and once we've got the base color of the blue done, we're then going to switch over to a bone white, which is a nice creamy white color. And for this, we're going to use um, a, a nice thin fine detail brush and we're going to paint all of the areas that we want to be this nice bright white color so for this i'm going to use on the helmet and i'm also going to use this on the weapons but i'm going to use this as well on some of the tags and little uh, parts that are sticking out of the model as well so as you can see there's a little band around uh, this guy's arm and then of course there's uh, little tags on each arm and just down by the heels as well on their legs again we're using a nice thin down paint so as you can see this is going to require two or three coats as well just to build that vibrancy and consistency up because the first coat is uh, obviously going to be a little bit thin and show through a little bit of the base color but that's nothing to worry about this is a good thing this shows that we're thinning our paints down nice and evenly and this is going to give us a nice thin even coat all the way through the miniature which is going to be really really pleasing towards the end as well so as you can see I'm just building this up across the gun as well here um, there's so many different ways that you could paint these different miniatures and this is just my own personal uh, recipe for painting my own craft world um, and just painting my own sort of um, version or my own sort of color scheme um, so you guys are more than welcome to sort of paint along and and pinch my sort of color scheme if you like and things like that um, but if not uh, you're more than welcome just to chill out and paint along with me and see sort of the different techniques and things that I use here anyway so as I say, just painting these little tags as well. And of course the little ammo belt, uh, the little ammo pouch um, or the clip or whichever it is. These little alien creatures, they've got different kinds of weapons and they all look kind of different anyway. So from there, I'm gonna use one of my favorites, which is the Tenebrous Gray. Again, if you don't have that, you can always use a nice matte black from Vallejo. And then I'm gonna paint a few of the little detail points that I'm gonna just keep this really dark color. So I'm gonna paint the pipe coming out of his arm here, just into the gun. But I'm also gonna paint a few things like the ammo clip as well on the weapon, um, the face mask as well. So I'm just gonna make a few bits really, really dark and, and sort of take away a little bit of the vibrancy just so that the really vibrant vibrant parts of this model so the blue uh, the bone white the really bright guns and things like that are really going to stand out then against these sort of darker points here so i'm going to paint the rails sort of the the main sort of barrel of the gun in this color as well using this black again separating that really light white color of the gun to a really dark sort of barrel of the gun as well and again this isn't any specific sort of color scheme that i've, I've seen this is just something that i'm just painting along and and i've, I've kind of made up for my own little um my own sort of craft world so like i say you're more than welcome to join along or you can make some changes as well if you want so if you've seen uh the, the guns painted in a slightly different way then you you can paint them sort of however uh, this is just my own little uh version 
So by the time we get to that stage, this is what we should look like. So a nice few uh, thin layers of that nice uh, blue, as you can see, is really nice even coat. And then we've got the, the bone white guns then against this dark color really standing out uh, as well. So this is where we should be at this stage. So I'm just showing you a few of the models here that I'm just painting up together at the same time. There we go. And that, that dark blue is a really good base color now because we're going to be able to build this color up from here. So we're going to start by doing that by using a mixture of Huldra blue with Ariane Rod blue, which again sounds like a really good Welsh word, that Ariane Rod, you know. So we're going to mix these two in a 50-50 uh, percentage. So this is just one blob of each. And again, using nice thin paint as well, we're just going to start to use the very tip of the brush just to pick out all of those details. So we're going to start here with the breastplate and work our way around parts of the armor now the cool thing with this is because that dark blue is so dark we're going to be able to keep that dark blue in bits um, just so that it, it it means that we get that contrast in certain areas so as an example the area around this character's neck you can see that's a dark blue it's almost black in some ways but it just catches the light with a little bit of blue so we're not going to paint that we're going to keep that exactly as it is so the light of this blue starts to grow those dark points then are where the shaded area is going to be so in other words we're not as i said at the beginning going to use a shade we're going to build the vibrancy up on the armor panels and then we're going to leave the darker um the, the darker base color sort of sit in where we want it to and that's going to create that contrast that we would normally gain out of the the washes and the shades so as you can see i'm going to leave that dark stage just uh, that that dark base color just around the neck but i'm also going to use and keep that just around the middle uh, of the model just at the back so between the armor panels and things like that almost creating that darker or that illusion of a darker element just underneath the armor as well and again that's all about building that contrast so you can see now by using this nice nice thin down paint how this is starting to glaze that color up so we gain in that color and we push in that color and build in that vibrancy but because it's nice and thin we're not getting the big thick splodges and blobs of random paints and things all over the place we and there we go once we've done the 50 50 mix we're then just going to use the Ariane rod blue on its own and we're going to do the same thing so we're going to thin this paint down nice and evenly and then we're going to use a nice even or multiple even coats just to get that vibrancy and that texture up to where we want so again we're going to start just up here on the breastplate and we're just going to start to bring that vibrancy up now the cool thing is with things like that little uh, sort of spot just on the breastplate there you can either paint those as jewels or as i'm doing i'm painting these in a similar sort of color and then i'm going to use um, a different color later just to pick out the jewel on the front so that this then brings your eye and focuses your eye onto something a little bit different as you can see, that's all I'm doing is just picking out all of those different armor panels and just using that nice thin paint, using the very, very tip of my brush. And I'm just building that vibrancy again. Now, the cool thing by doing this in stages, as I normally say when I'm talking to you about painting and as we make these little videos and things like that, is all of these different individual stages of um, building those paints up. So going with the, the base, then half and half, then the main color, then half with that and a highlight each stage that we do sort of naturally progresses and builds that vibrancy without it looking out of place um, if you jump sometimes too quickly from one color to another it can look a little bit uh, too extreme or a little bit too um, over the top so this is why we use those mixtures first and this is why we sort of half and half mix them first just to kind of give us uh, a sort of a stepping stone up to that vibrancy and it's all about just making it a little bit more natural on your eyes and looking just that little bit nicer and a little bit more subtle than just uh, painting it one one flat color and another flat highlight and things like that it's just about making it nice and subtle so as you can see, I'm picking out all of those armor panels and then I'm also doing the same thing just down on the back on the legs here and the same, just manipulating and moving that nice thin paint around just so that I get a nice even coverage of the model and it is building nice and subtly and nice and evenly as I want. The cool thing is I don't mind, as you guys know, when I'm painting, I don't mind things like brush strokes and things like that in the models because sometimes you can use those brush strokes to add a little bit of dynamism to the model and the painting as well. Now what we're going to do from there is we're going to use that Ariane Rod Blue and then we're just going to add and mix a little bit of a lighter shade 
just to kind of build that color up so we're going to use a little bit of the uh, math blue as well and we're going to do the same thing as normal we're just going to use a 50 percent of each so just a blob of each color just to build that little vibrance that little highlight again as i was saying earlier just about making it a little bit more uh, subtle and that little bit more normal on the eye as well so again using these nice thin down paints as you can see now the vibrancy is really starting to build and you can be a little bit more selective as to where you're placing this now so you can place the highlighted areas more towards the top of the armor and parts of the armor where you think the light is going to catch and things like that um, I'm just going to cover little bits and see where I go and see how far um, I, I can build the armor and make the armor look really really nice and stand out um, as, as nice and bright and vibrant as possible. When I was designing and coming up with the idea of the different color um, of the craft world, the different sort of uh, um, vibrancy or, or color sort of scheme for the arm, uh, the army itself that I've got, is I was looking for something that would be quite a nice blue, but a, a nice vibrant light color blue. Um, but I also wanted sort of darker areas underneath the armor as well. So this is kind of what I came up with when I was thinking about or envisioning my own craft world and what it would be like and, and how, it would, uh, how it would look. So I hope you guys are enjoying uh, the, the sort of slow and subtle build up to this blue and this sort of um, subtle kind of uh, vibrant color that we're getting out of these blues as well. I know that I'm using a little bit of an obscure paint in this one using the scale 75 but it's all personal choice and it's things that you can try. Um, I really wanted to use these paints for something special so having this uh, set of models that, that I, I picked up around sort of the holidays this is the perfect opportunity to try these out and to, uh, to get this nice, nice new set of paints uh, working then. So as you can see now, that major difference there, just on the back, you can see from the left hand to the right hand side of the armor, just how vibrant this next stage is being, or this next stage is going to be next to the older one, next to the, 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 the stage just before the, the slightly sort of darker area. So once that's done and once we've dried that down, we're then going to use just the Amarth Blue on its own. So the same thing as what we've been doing is we're just going to thin this down and we're going to subtly build this back up again. We're almost kind of glazing these now. So these these um, these blue layers that we build in, these highlighted layers, these are very, very thin. So this is going to allow some of the color from below to shine through as well. Um, when these dry down, these aren't going to dry really thick. They're not going to take over the model. They're just going to boost that vibrancy and get a little bit more um, sort of lightness and, and sort of uh, a lighter colour coming through on parts of the armour. Like I say, it's going to show through some of the armour underneath, some of the darker colour underneath, and that's part of the beauty of this sort of uh, painting style on this armour, is that it kind of gives you a little bit of a, a two-tone effect, I guess, because we're also going to get the uh, the dark, dark areas where we're leaving the paint out, where we're not painting uh, the, the, the vibrant layers up on top of, so the, the darker underneath is going to stay nice and dark, and as we get lighter and lighter and lighter onto these colors we're also going to get this this real sort of pop of color this real sort of nice bright blue color that that I was hoping for for my craft world as you can see I'm just doing the same thing again I'm just glazing this really nice light blue just across uh, the top of these armor panels and again it doesn't matter if some of that that color is showing through from underneath because that's given us that sort of uh, alien two-tone sort of color as well which is great that's kind of what we're looking for and this is gonna dry down and blend together really 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 lovely it's gonna have a really nice sort of subtle kind of color and tone to it as well it's gonna be great it's gonna make these really pop and stand out on the battlefield uh, which is awesome awesome that's what we want these to do they want them to be their own unique sort of unit and they are going to be that so from there I'm also then going to start painting the uh, orange colour. So I'm going to start with a dwarf skin from Vallejo and what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to paint this just across the shoulder pads. So obviously each carrot has two shoulder pads so we're just going to paint this over both of those. Again using two nice thin layers just to build the colour and the vibrancy up. This is going to be our base colour and from there we're going to build a nice nice really sort of bright vibrant orange colour and tone on top as well and this is going to look really 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 nice. Um, so as you can see I'm just trying to be careful now not to get any of this on the blue because we've worked so hard building that blue up and getting that blue tone and that vibrancy up so we're not going to get this on any of that we're going to take our time and use the very tip of the brush to build this up here and something that I'm going to do with these as well just to kind of number or mark my unit this particular unit I'm just going to put a small orange band across the left 
hand upright part of the armor that's sticking out just across the back. So on the left hand side I'm going to put a little band across all of these models and this is going to signify that these are part of that squad. And what I might do then is when I paint my second squad I might put a band on the right hand side so that I know which models belong to which squad and that's going to give me a really cool um, easy way of isolating and knowing which squad each model belongs to when I'm playing the game as well which is really cool um, rather than pulling them out of the box and not knowing who goes where um, it's going to be a cool way of identifying them. Now from there I said I was going to build up a really nice bright vibrant color so we're using a medium orange from AK Interactive this is a lovely 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 bright color if you don't have AK Interactive um, and you wanted to use something else you could always use a nice bright orange from Vallejo as well that would equally do the same thing now once all of that's done so the armor is pretty much there we're then going to move on and use the skin I'm going to use a trusted uh, tried and tested version of skin that I use so I'm using the Vallejo and we're going to go with a beige red as a base color and I'm just going to throw in a little bit of a double picture paint in here so you can see that I'm painting some of the guys that have got their faces showing and once that base color is on then I'm going to use a soft tone wash but with flow improver so I'm going to make this really really thin and I'm going to turn this into a very 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 thin glaze so I'm using about three parts flow improver to one part wash here and the reason for this is I want this to just bring a little bit of subtle sort of bone color uh, onto that white and I can also use this same wash on the face as well this isn't something that is desperately needs to be done uh, but just with that sort of uh, bone white color it will allow it to stand out a lot more when we build this up so once that's done, we're going back to that beige red and again, just throwing in two of them here just to show you kind of how I'm painting the faces and how I'm painting the skin. So we're just going to build this color back up, just being very, very careful using the very, very tip of the brush just to pick out some of the areas uh, where the light is going to be catching. So of course, the bald guy, we're going to paint over the whole of his head because obviously uh, being a bald guy, we want the light and all of the brightness to show uh, across the skin on his head and things like that which is going to really break up the difference between being a model covered in armor with just a little bit of, of skin and things as well to make him look a little bit more um, I want to say human but these guys aren't human so so yeah as you can see just using the very tip of my brush just to pick out some of those areas and some of the parts where uh, I want the uh, the skin to be now from there, if you've watched me paint skin before, you'll know which way this is going. I'm going to mix basic skin tone and beige red using a 50-50, so that's half of each. And then I'm going to use a nice thin paint again, and I'm just going to slowly build that back up. So I'm going to show you all of the skin now, uh, or the rest of the skin, uh, just on the baldy guy here. And we're just going to build this up, as you can see. So this is already starting to take a nice vibrant twist. So we're getting that little highlight just across the top where the light is going to be catching. And then, of course, it's going to be uh, very careful just around the eye here, just to build up the cheeks and things like that. Now, on camera, I'm not going to paint the eyes for you. It is a very, very difficult thing to paint on camera for me. Uh, but if you want to paint the eyes, you're more than welcome to give it a go. Um, some people prefer to paint the eyes before painting the skin, and that is perfectly fine. That is up to you. I actually opted to paint the eyes later, uh, which turned out to be a little bit of a fiddle because the eyes are particularly small. But we made it work anyway, so it doesn't matter too much. So once that's done, we're just going to use the basic skin tone on its own as the next highlight for the skin. And once again, here we go. We're just going to pick out some of the areas. So the nose, uh, just across the forehead, uh, the cheekbones, the chin, uh, just across the very tips of the ears as well. So we can kind of see how uh, bright the light is just catching across those areas. And again, with these nice thin down paints, this is going to allow us to blend these colors in quite nicely. So I'm just going to do the same thing across here, just across the bald guy. So I'm just going to pick out his eyebrows first and then start to build that highlight and build that color up across his head here. Again, just using the very tip of the brush just to be very, very careful around the eyes and around the eye area. And as you can see, I'm just gently building that tone and that color up, just slowly sketching this up with the paintbrush, as you can see. And again, the very tip of the ears as well. There we go, just like so. And again, we don't mind if there's brush strokes involved because, again, these are painted miniatures. Not everything is going to be super smooth and perfect and everything like that. So this is all just a big painting process. 
And there we go, so that's the skin completed. So once we've done the skin, we're then gonna use Earth just to base tone uh, the hair. So again, just showing you on both models simultaneously that I'm just base tone in the hair using this Earth color as you can see and then the bobble on the one on the right you could sort of use any color that you like now for that one i used a very very dark brown something like a dryad bark from citadel would be perfect or a leather brown from ak interactive again would be perfect just to kind of split things up and, and things like that i'm going to use a strong tone shade uh, straight from the pot this time so i'm not going to thin this one down because i want this one to be really really dark I'm just going to pick out the hair so as you can see the wash is just going to sit in all of those little recess points so that this is creating now a nice element of light to dark and picking out all of those different strands of hair for us without us having to do too much work. The cool thing with using the uh, strong tone in this way is once it's dry, you could pretty much just call it there and say that the hair is good enough. Uh, but instead, I'm just going to build up a little bit more. So I'm using a leather brown from Vallejo, and I'm just going to single-handedly pick out using the very tip of the brush all of those individual hair strands. So if you've watched the channel and you've seen some of the other videos that I do, you can dry brush these things. But as I normally say, just spending that little bit of extra time using uh, the tip of the brush to just pick out the hair normally makes the models really stand out on the table and you can really tell the time and effort that you put into it. It's almost a source of pride because once you finish the painting you can be really proud of what you've created as well which gives you that really cool boost of, uh, of confidence each time you sort of build this up. And there you go, as you can see, I'm just sketching it out using the very tip of the brush, just gently using small amounts of paint at a time and just building those lines up and across the hair. This can be an area where it can be a little bit complicated, uh, but the more you paint like this, the more you kind of get used to it. And again, like I say, the brush strokes and things come in handy for this because this becomes uh, a perfect time where you get that, that contrast. So I'm gonna use a bone white and leather brown together then after that, just to do a nice highlight. And again, using half and half, so this is half of the bone white, half of the leather brown, and you can already see that massive difference in the vibrance there. And you can see that highlight now is starting to really show off that hair. And each strand that we pick out now is always go is, is going to stand out really, really great on the model. Um, so again, once this is on the table or in your display cabinet, this is really going to look the part. Again, like I say, this is kind of a sense of pride because when you're looking at the model, you know how much time and effort you put into each, each strand of hair as it was. Um, giving you that that sort of um, that boost, you know, giving you that kind of confidence boost to know how 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 sort of much you painted that by hand and how much you sort of grown and progressed rather than just dry brushing. So once that's done, we're gonna use bone white on its own and we're gonna move on to using uh, this on all of the white parts. So as you can see, whereas I've used that very, very thin glazed shade, it has sat in the recess points, but without darkening the model too much, which is great, that's exactly what we wanted. We didn't wanna darken the model down and things like that. We didn't wanna use too many shades, so we're just using a small glaze. And then using this bone white, I'm gonna paint around this little uh, area on the helmet so that that creates a little bit of uh, a small amount of a shadow shadow around this um, this sort of area on the helmet which is great because that's then going to give us that illusion of depth that we talk about so we're just going to have that little darker patch that slight subtle light brown just going around that while we paint up this uh, bone white color and that's going to give us this great great tone through the weapon then as well and we're going to do the same thing just on the weapon as you can see i'm just painting around uh the the raised areas so that, that just gives that little halo that little sort of round light uh, glaze of brown and you can see i just made a little mistake there and the cool thing by using thin down paints as you can see is with a little bit of water you can just fix things up nice and quickly and easily and there we go just the same thing again we're going to paint around this just like so I'm just going to build this this tone, this colour back up, this vibrance back up. But at the same time, we're just giving ourselves that, that subtle little shadow just around those areas. 
And then we're going to do the exact same thing, but we're just going to use the Elphic Flesh for this one. This is a great, great light white colour. So again, this is a creamy white colour, but it's a much, much brighter version of the Bone White, which is a perfect way of building this vibrance up. And once you've finished with this, you can also edge highlight the weapon and things using just a straight flat white, something like a, a white scar would be perfect. You could just use that just across the very edges if you want to, if you're a big fan of the edge highlighting. Uh, personally, I'm not an edge highlight guy, uh, so I tend not to paint like that. I like to paint um, my models to look like they painted rather than edge highlighted, but each to their own. So if you want to do that, you are more than welcome uh, to do that as well. And as you can see, I'm just painting around those areas, like I said, just painting around the bits that are sticking out. So these little round uh, areas that are just poking out, just creating that depth, that, that illusion of this bone kind of white depth on the weapons as well. Now, I opted for sort of a white sort of colour on the weapons because I read that white and certain colours can be seen as um, quite sacred in the Eldar uh, world so I wanted to paint some with white helmets and paint their weapons white and things like that so this is the idea behind that and it's also about making things really really vibrant so we've got that blue and the orange and then the white just stands out as well so just making it completely different so I'm going to use a different paint on the channel for this one, just using a Arbuckles uh, Brown. Again, if you wanted to and you've watched me paint in before and you've collected some of the other paints, the uh, Dark Rust 302 from Vallejo would equally work brilliant here. It's just because I have some new paints, I wanted to try them out and do something a little bit different. Same thing again, I'm using this Kokum Copper, but if you don't have that, Leather Brown from Vallejo, again, equally would work just as well. And that's all I'm doing with these bits, is I'm just painting these little leather pouches. And there's a lot of different ways that you could paint browns and leathers, and you've seen a few of those with me when I painted uh, Radicast the Brown. So just trying to mix things up and give you guys plenty of different options of how to do things. I'm then going to use a blue-grey pail. Um, for this one, we're just going to use a very, 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 very subtle light dry brush just around the pipe here. And again, this is just about making things as nice and simple and easy as possible. We spent all that time painting the armour, making the armour really vibrant and stand out. So with this, we're just going to paint a nice, uh, subtle dry brush of grey just around this pipe, just to give it a little bit more uh, depth to it than just a black tube. And then I'm also going to use a pastel peach. Now, I did mention earlier about a edge highlight. So this is kind of how uh, the, the easiest way to kind of do it. So using this pastel peach, you could just drag the very edge of your brush just across the edges of the shoulder blades, just like so. And this will give them just a, a little subtle edge to them. So this will give them a little subtle highlight just along the very edges just like so and using the side of your brush so just using along the side of your brush and not the tip of your brush this gives you a lot more control when it comes to edge highlighting normally when you use the tip of your brush you can uh, lose a little bit of control going all around the uh, the edges i'm going to do the same thing using this hero blue as well uh, from the uh, scale 75 and i'm just going to use a very subtle small amount just across the very edge of the back armor and that's it. As far as edge highlighting goes, that is as far as I'm going to go on this particular model. I'm not going to paint around each part of the armor and things like that. I'm just going to stick to the backpack and the shoulder blades as well. Nice and simple. And then finally, we're just going to paint up the gems by using a base color of black red from Vallejo. So we're just going to paint the gem right on the very front here, just to give you an idea as to how I'm doing this. So it's the black red first, just like so. And we're just going to make sure that we put maybe one maybe two layers of this in just to be uh, safe, just to make sure that we've got enough vibrancy from the paint as well. And as you can see, that's gonna be a really good base color for this. Just like so, we're gonna to try to make sure that we keep this just in the gem area, so we're being careful not to get this too much outside of where we want it to be. Then I'm gonna use Carmine Red, and we're gonna put a little bit of this just on top. This time we're only gonna paint sort of maybe down to about three quarters of the way down the gem, or maybe just about halfway down the gem because we don't want to cover too much of the gem in this. We want some of that darkness just down the bottom as well. So this gives the gem a little bit of a, a two-tone, a bit of a, a highlight and things like that so that it makes it look more like a gemstone rather than just a blob of red colour. And you can see that black red now starting to work really, really well with the carmine red. Just making sure that there's not too much paint on my brush. And again, just picking out the top area there. Yeah, so we're getting that two-tone now, as you can see, that's perfect. 
perfect. And then finally, we're just going to add a small amount of Bloody Red on top. And Bloody Red is one of my favourite named paints of all time. And again, we're just going to pick this now just on the very top, on the, the major edge just up here. So maybe just a quarter of the gem. And there we go. You can see that gem is already starting to really, really pop that vibrancy you've got it from that dark red right through to this really really nice uh, bloody red highlight just up on the very top of the gem so that's a nice quick and easy way of painting red gems right there for you again just using the very tip of the brush just like so and look at that vibrancy that gem is popping that is looking really really great and so, all in all, that is my squad of five. Nice and simple. No real washes on the armour. We've painted all of these up by hand. we painted them up in layers and in stages. Um, and I think they look pretty cool. That's a really cool, interesting and fun way of painting um, a different kind of armour set. So, yeah, I've enjoyed this. And this is going to be a really cool and fun painting set for uh, my army as a whole. You'll have to let me know in the comments below what you think of the uh, the colour scheme. And, oh, of course, what you think of the, the sort of way of painting up without using the wash so rather painting from the dark and then building those layers up and let me know what you think overall um, all in all my friends thank you so much for tuning in thank you for watching thanks for all your support all your positivity like i said earlier i hope that you guys have had the best time over the holidays or on christmas and new year with your families um, so yeah it's great to be back in the new year and it's great to be painting and what a great way to start off the new year with a squad of eldar thank you so much if you stuck through to the very end and i will hopefully catch you guys on the next one. Take care, my friends.